Hello everyone, we hope you're doing splendidly well. For today's valued viewer request, we've got from David Kelly. Hi Cap, video suggestion. I found an F-20 Tiger Shark sales fill, film and wanted to see your thoughts on it. And we've got it here. And uh, people have been asking us to do Tiger Shark videos for ages and asking us if the Tiger Shark's ever going to come to DCS and fly a Tiger Shark and stuff. Well, no, the Tiger Shark was never going to come to DCS because it was never real, a real plane per se. It never went into production. It never fought in any wars. So it would never be in DCS. And it's a massive sore point for people because lots of people love the Tiger Shark concept and hope, it, you know, wished it would have done well. Me too. It didn't, unfortunately. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, F-20. So imagine the F-5 from the 60s in the mid-70s, 75 I think it was, they were developed the next generation of Tiger, which was the Tiger Shark, the F-20, more modern avionics and engines, which are always a bit of a sore point for the F-5, replaced by a modern, efficient, very powerful F-18 engine, I think it was. So just a single engine to make it a really cool fighter. And it was meant to compete with the, I think it was the FX series at the time, what would become the F-16 and the F-18. And it just didn't take off. The F-16 was chosen and the F-18 was chosen. And a lot of people have saw about it, uh, including me, because this could have been a really good cheap fighter solution. The Air Force, whatever, I'm sure they had their reasons. So let's go back and take a look at this. The the, the project lasted about 10 years until it was scrapped when they realized they just weren't going to get any sales. But, uh, and watch history again, and then we'll have a chat about it. Today. Many countries around the world must guard their borders against possible sudden attack. The scene may be much like this. The potential enemy only minutes away. The first line of defense is tactical air power. The need is for quick response, high performance, and the ability to fly again and again and again with only the aircraft, the men, and the supplies at hand. Current generation fighters offer high performance, but most are not as reliable as they need to be. Operating and support costs are high. Aircraft availability is low. Only now, with the new technology of the 80s, is it possible to have a fighter with both high performance and reliability. This is the F-20 Tiger Shark. America's newest tactical fighter. The F-20 is the most dependable fighter flying today. With the performance and modern systems needed to dominate the tactical air combat arena on air-to-air, -air, air to ground, and air to sea missions. It's a harpoon, look at that. Retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General Charles E. Chuck Yeager. I shot down my first fighter using a ring and bead gun sight in a P-51. Now the air combat arena of today is so lethal that if you're not flying a fighter with current technology, chances are you'll never see the guy that shoots you down. In the old days, we wasted a lot of time trying to maneuver around on the tail of an airplane to use your gun or get into the envelope of the old missile systems. But the object today is to strap your fanny to a 9G fighter with an engine you don't have to worry about and with an advanced avionics system that gives you the capability of managing all of your weapon systems without even looking in the cockpit or taking your hands off the stick and throttle. The object today is to aim and shoot. And the guy that does that first wins. If you don't, you lose. It's that simple. For air defense, the need is to get off the ground fast with modern weapons, to make the intercept quickly, and to maneuver rapidly. The F-20 carries up to six Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles and can simultaneously employ sparrows and Sidewinders. The Tiger Shark will also carry the new generation AMRAAM medium-range ah. missile. How about that? Uh, just got to 3 minutes and 15. So this was must have been early 80s this was filmed because the F-20, the, the project was scrapped in 1986. So it must have been early 80s. So they were already talking about putting the old AMRAAM A's on it, which obviously weren't built at this time, but they were, you know, obviously planning for God knows how many years. How interesting. So six Sidewinders of whatever the variant was at the time. Mike, probably, early 80s, I think. May have that wrong. The Sparrows at the time, obviously, whatever model we had. 
and Fire and Forget Amaranth Box 3s. How interesting. I wasn't aware of that. Very interesting. It looks like it can take probably four of them, plus a couple of sidewinders. You're on strip alert. A low-flying, high-speed intruder is detected 80 miles from your base in the Tiger Shark. You can respond faster than in any other fighter in the world today. With its self-contained cartridge starter, the Tiger Shark's... Cartridge starter. That's awesome. That reminds me of the old uh, B-57 Canberra, the British plane. You, you, you put a gunpowder or similar cartridge in and it just starts itself. You don't need any ground air, any ground electric. Pretty cool. Engine reaches idle power in 19 seconds. Its wow, laser that? inertial navigator aligns in 22 seconds to an accuracy of better than one nautical mile per hour. Wow, so it had a laser, well, laser gyro is, is a normal thing to have uh, in 80s, 90s and whatever. Uh, but it fully aligned in 19 seconds. I think the best we've got is 30 seconds with relatively decent, no, a stored heading alignment with an F-16 is what, 30 seconds. So if that's true, that's awesome. With a clutter-free radar target display and front aspect weapons firing capability. So I suppose that's talking about the sidewind as a front aspect. Its laser inertial navigator aligns in 22 seconds to an accuracy of better than one nautical mile per hour. One nautical mile per hour. That seems really good. And the Mirage is like half of that, isn't it? The Mirage 2000. I thought that was a mile every 30 minutes, if it's true. With a clutter-free radar target display and... Clutter-free radar target display. I'm guessing that means it's got a pulse Doppler radar. Must mean that, mustn't it? So it can aim down, shoot down. Front aspect weapons firing capability. Must be the Fox 2. In less than a minute from a cold start, you're airborne. So it's a QRA in less than a minute. Can you think of anything else that can do that? While other fighters are still on the ground, your combat information comes on two display indicators, all digital. The F-20s pulse... Ooh, look at that. That What is that? That's Hornet-esque. Is it a Hornet radar, does anyone know? Doppler radar has more than eight times the detection volume of conventional pulse radars. You can detect fighter size intruders up to 48 miles away, look up, 31 miles away, look down. 48 miles away, look up. This is for lock and fire, presumably. And 31 miles, look down. That's pretty contemporary for the 80s. The APG-63 had similar, didn't it? And what had the 63? Was it the F-15? I think it was the F-15. God, so many radars. So it seems as powerful as anything at the time. The track while scan mode tracks up to 10 threat aircraft and prioritizes up to eight for maximum situation awareness. So you can prioritize eight, so that's pretty contemporary, isn't it? With a, with a Hornet radar. In less than three minutes. I mean, this is uh, this is actually impressive. This is early 80s, remember? At this time, remember, the F-16 didn't even have the ability to fire at beyond visual range. Remember, the F-16As could only fire sidewinders. This is literally 1986, I remember, the F-16 couldn't even fire a Sparrow. And it was being sold around the world. So, just saying, this was way, way ahead of everything at the time. In terms of its contemporaries, I mean, I mean, this isn't, you know, this isn't meant to be against the F-15. This is meant to be against the F-16, the F-18. From the alert, you are 20 miles from me, flying faster than Mach 1. With the F-20's look down radar, you're locked on to the low flying intruder. Pilots in current frontline fighters would only now be breaking ground. Controls on the stick and throttle reduce your workload. So obviously modern Select hotels. radar modes. Weapons, Sparrow. Oh, that is so Hornet. That is just a Hornet HSI, isn't it? That's a Hornet HSI. Does anyone see if it's got the UFC? Okay. Oh, you can't. No, it does not have a UFC. So how's data entry work? It'll be interesting. To me, that's just a Hornet Compass Rosen. It even says data there. That is Hornet data, just like the waypoint up down, waypoint to the HUD. That is just Hornet avionics. Yeah, you got TACAN there. You got ILS there. All exactly the same. Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles. Wow, it's got a Hollywood. <laughs> it's got a Hollywood SMS. I've never seen a Hollywood SMS in a real plane before. How about that? I mean, it's, it's, it's also quite similar to the uh, the Hornet as well. SMS. How did he activate that without pressing the OSB? I wonder. Oh, there it does have a UFC. I just missed it. Yeah, so it's got a standard keypad UFC there. What appears to be a Hornet radar there, but let me know. You got the R dub there. May have EW page. Not sure. And you've got your left MFD, which appears to be identical to Hornet there as well. Super interesting stuff. Hard is a Hornet hard. That's Hornet, that's Hornet, that's Hornet. That's not quite Hornet. That's Hornet? That's Hornet. ASC Circle is Hornet because it's a it's a counterclockwise winder range alert. And it's even got a Hornet engine. This is, I reckon it's Hornet avionics, Hornet engine, 
in a cheap little reliable F5 airframe. Super cool. Can't believe they didn't buy this little beast. Anyway, we're going to carry on, guys. And head up display. You oh, never need to <laughs> take your eyes off the target. In less than four minutes, That's pretty much eight, eight isn't miles it? out, you employ front aspect weapons to make the intercept. Boom, sidewinder. For close in maneuvering, the need is to point and shoot first. The F-20's new aerodynamics and 18,000 pound thrust class engine produce quick, tight turns. With I mean, that's twice, nearly twice as much power as the F-5. The combat thrust to weight ratio of better than one, the F-20 has the power to rapidly accelerate above corner velocity. The Tiger Shark is hard to see and has a very low radar cross section. It has no restrictions or limiters on angle of attack, roll rate, or yaw. An advanced digital flight control system lets you do exactly what you want, even through hard maneuvers. The F-20 is powered by the most advanced and dependable production engine in the world. Isn't it funny, this plane that started in 1975 has got the same engine, essentially, I know it's a slightly different version, the same engine as the Gripen which is going to go on to like 2050. That's 80, nearly 80 years of this engine. You don't have to worry about compressor stalls or throttle restrictions in the Tiger Shark. That's not the way it is in most fighters. Throttle bursts from idle to full afterburner have been achieved at 45,000 feet at 47 knots. Unthinkable in most current frontline fighters. For air-to-surface missions, the need is for payload radius, accurate navigation, and weapons delivery, day or night, in adverse weather and at low altitudes. The F-20 carries a variety of ordnance. Maverick missiles, 30 Go. millimeter gun pod, Go. laser guided bombs, Go. as well as the harpoon and conventional weapons. Did it say if it had a targeting pod though? Because that's a that big. Mm, it's probably too early for targeting pod, what do you think? Loaded with five Mark 82 bombs and sidewinders for self protection and two 330 gallon fuel tanks, the Tiger Shark has a combat radius and a low, low, low mission profile of more than 340 nautical miles. Its high, low, high combat radius in the same configuration is 550 nautical miles. And with the F-20's laser inertial navigator, you're off the ground and on the way to your target more rapidly and more accurately than in any other tactical fighter. A single F-20, configured as a tanker, can extend the strike range of a flight of four Tiger Sharks by more than 25%. The F-20 radar's real beam ground mapping... Oh, air to ground radar. Again, presumably just... Same as the F-18 question mark? Similar to me. Mode has a range of 80 miles to help you navigate and locate the target at low altitudes. The freeze mode lets you continue to navigate without emitting radar energy, increasing your chances for surprise and survival. A single switch calls up weapons release programs stored prior to takeoff. A conformal countermeasure system, chaff flare, radar warning receiver and the agility of the Tiger Shark enhance survivability. The Doppler beam sharpening mode allows for precise target designation. We don't have that yet in the Hornet, do we? So again, it seems the same as the Hornet. Used with the night and all weather CCRP mode, it permits automatic weapons delivery system accuracy of 5.9 mils or 60 feet. In the visual CCIP mode, System accuracy is within 3.9 mils, or 47 feet. With the F-20 smart avionics, or smart weapons, you can allocate your aircraft to destroy a wider array of targets. The multi-role Tiger Shark also gives the tactical air commander the combined capability to conduct both strike and surveillance missions over water. With the F-20 radar's Doppler processing mode in C-2 operation, Vessels in rough sea states are shown on a clutter-free display. With the freeze and moving target modes, you increase your chances for surprise by firing a harpoon Wowza. missile from over the horizon. Look at that. Flying at 4,000 feet with three 330-gallon fuel tanks, the F-20 on a single mission patrols 60,000 square miles. It two thirds of the Arabian Gulf or the entire Gulf of Thailand. The U.S. Air Force Flight Test Center. 
where the F-20 has met or bettered all planned performance, reliability, and maintainability objectives. The Tiger Shark was designed from the beginning with reliability and maintainability in mind. Over the past two years, Tiger Sharks have logged more than 800 test and demonstration flights with a combined mission availability rate of 97%. F-20s have been flown by U.S. Air Force and Navy pilots and the pilots of more than 15 other countries. F-20 performance, reliability, and maintainability have been evaluated by the U.S. Air Force, which has overseen the Tiger Shark program from the start. In late 1983, the Tiger Shark began a series of weapons demonstration tests and confirmed its ferry range by flying unrefueled from Edwards Air Force Base, California to Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C., a distance of more than 2,000 nautical miles. In a recent test at Edwards Air Force Base, the F-20 displayed its unique designed in reliability and maintenance features. During the realistic exercise simulating the first day of combat, the F-20 was tasked to fly continuous intercept missions against simulated targets. Turnaround time of the Tiger Shark is less than 15 minutes. F-20s are 50% more reliable than current frontline fighters and need less than half the maintenance and 40% fewer maintenance personnel. In the 12-hour period of the exercise, the Tiger Shark completed 12 missions with the designed in reliability of the F-20, tactical air commanders can sustain sortie rates 40% higher than with current frontline fighters. Modern technology with new levels of reliability produces a new standard of sortie rates, a new kind of tactical advantage. A third F-20 joined the Tiger Shark flight demonstration and test program in May. F-20 deliveries are scheduled to begin 24 months from go-ahead. The F-20 Tiger Shark, America's newest and most reliable tactical fighter. By every measure, a new generation fighter with a new generation of modern technology for combat performance and air power reliability. Uh, there you go. It's there, but it just never happened. It never sold for whatever reason. So you guys are going to have to tell me why that is but it seems like an absolute beast f5 reliability ruggedness and proven uh, engineering with hornet engine or similar on apparent hornet avionics but the f16 won out for whatever reason anyone on the stream want to say anything else before we sign off f16 was probably newer and sexier at the time that does help sell you know that does help sell politicians yeah, and the, the airframe looked too much like an F5, probably. Mm. I mean, it was originally called the F5G. Yeah, it was. And they wanted to change it, obviously. I think it was more... I'm going to guess the 16 was, you know, much higher performance. High performance, but obviously that. higher cost as well. As in... Yeah. Well, maybe even more orders of magnitude, I don't know. But I guarantee the F16A costs more than that. Well, anyway, that's part of history. We'll let the viewers argue about that. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you later.